Hey guys, today I'm going to change out the oil and oil filter on my 1995 Vulcan. There are some important similarities and differences compared to a normal vehicle, and so I'm going to try and make it interesting for you. This is a 17 millimeter socket. All right, now, those of you who know oil changes will know that this is a critical point. Thou shalt not double gasket. Always check to make sure that gasket, here it is here, make sure that gasket comes off. You can change oil filters all your life, and if you make a mistake on this once, you lose all of the profit that you would have made by blowing out the engine. So you have to check to be sure this gasket is removed and then double check the surface, make sure that's nice and clean as well. Now there's something unique about these Vulcans and they have a an oil filter screen as well. And so we're going to take that out now. Now oh, there's the bolt right there, 17 millimeter. So we'll just take that out, it's a bit hard to see. Now inside is the screen, and so I'll just reach in with my finger. First a spring, hold the screen in place. Right there, and then the screen. Just reach in with your finger and it'll fit onto it like a thimble. There's the washer. And then after that, the screen. There it is there. This screen looks really clean. I'm just gonna rinse it off with some brake cleaner. Now, after those parts have dried, let's slide it all back together again. First the screen, then the washer. Then the spring. and then the nut to hold it all in place. Here's the bolt. I'm going to use the same crush washer as was on before. Some people like to change them. Here's the oil fi old filter with the old gasket and the new filter. And I like Brian's Mobile's one's suggestion to kiss these up against each other, make sure they fit, and they do. And then it always, it's always easier to do this if the filter is situated vertically, but uh, I'll try and get some oil on this. If you fill it completely with oil, you'll end up with oil all over your floor, so you can't fill it completely. So here's the new filter, and I've wiped it, just a thin film of oil on the gasket material just to help it seal, and importantly, to prevent it from grabbing and forming an oxbow effect, and then we just slide it on. Always goes on finger tight, with not a lot of tools. So run tight there, and then half a turn more. That's it. So our next step is a little more tricky. We've got to fill it with oil. Uh, this bike needs about three liters or so. Now, this is the check plug, and I've got the bike tipped sideways on its stand and so it's not an accurate assessment but I just wanted to show you what it looks like and you can see a little meniscus at the bottom now when we fill it with oil that meniscus is going to slide upward and the fill mark is with the fluid level halfway up when the bike is exactly horizontal alright so this is the fill plug right here and we just 
and do this like so. For this bike, it calls for 1040 motor oil. So you can see the fluid is completely up, but the bike is tipped on its side. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to level the bike. And um, I'll show you this in a second how I do this, but uh, I'm going to step onto the bike and level it. And then the challenge becomes, how do you see the... How do you see the level when you're putting it level? And um, that's, of course, a tricky maneuver. So what we'll do here, the easy thing for me today is I've got a video camera on it, and so we can see it in replayed action. Now, we've got it level right now. The bike is level, and so I'll see in a moment whether or not um, my level is accurate there. Right there. Before you check the final oil level, you want to circulate that oil around and get whatever air pockets out of the oil filter before you make a final decision about where the oil is. Okay, while we're waiting to clear the air bubbles from the system, just have a look around and make sure there's no leaks here. You may get a leak one time out of a hundred, but if you let it leave the shop with a leak, you're going to get a call back or something worse. It's always best to be sure. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I check the oil level on this bike. I must say I'm not completely happy with my method. If anybody has any better suggestions, I'd like to hear them. But I use a mirror on a handle and a level. And let me show you how to do that. I guess part of the reason I, like to, I don't like this system is that I like to check my oil level myself. And I don't like anybody else to be sitting on my bike. So that puts me into a dilemma. So we'll put it upright. I'm going to set the level on the handlebars until I'm happy that we're in a level position. Okay, I'm level now. And then I use my mirror. Okay, we're down just a bit. I'm going to need to add a little bit more. Okay, let's stop it there. Let me outline some key points. Uh, I think you should run the vehicle before you change the oil, mainly to lubricate the top end of the engine in preparation for the slight delay in oil delivery that happens at first startup later. Make sure the filter gasket comes off. Check for leaks while the engine is running after you're done and recheck the level over the coming days. Don't let air tools or filter wrenches cause you to over torque bolts or filters. Say, if this video helped you out, hit the subscribe or the like button to make it easier for others to find later. I'd appreciate any comments you might have.